Today, I want to talk about the difference between analog and digital electronics. We're all familiar with an analog clock. There's a minute hand and an hour hand. And we're familiar with a digital equivalent. And we're also familiar with the Morse code, or at least we know a little bit of it. We've heard about it. That it's a way of signaling information where you have a, a dot, dash, dot, dash, dash, dot. Now this is a way of transmitting information that's very similar to how a computer or how a digital computer transmits information. The digital computer uses, instead of dots and dashes, it uses zeros and ones. For example, this dot may correspond to a zero. This dash correspond to a one, zero, one, one, zero. But what does this mean electrically, a, a zero and a one? Let's presume we have two metal plates. And we'll put a positive charge on the top plate and a negative charge on the bottom plate. This will produce an electric field between the two plates. And we can call this condition a logical one. We have a potential difference. We have a voltage difference between these two plates. Now if I put a, a resistor between the top plate and the bottom plate, the charge will redistribute and it will become something like this, where the top plate has equal plus minus plus minus and the bottom plate is plus minus plus minus. And in this case there is no electric field as both plates have the same voltage or the same electrical potential. So we can call this condition a logical zero. Let's consider another analog and digital example. Let's consider a thermometer. Here I have an analog thermometer, and with this thermometer, I want to measure the temperature of water. If the reading of the thermometer is down here, the water is freezing. It's, it's zero degrees centigrade. If the thermometer reads up here, we'll go say this is a 100 degrees centigrade. So at the top the water is boiling, at the bottom the water is freezing. I want to represent this analog thermometer digitally. So let's consider how I could do this. For example, I could set up a digital scale. And let's consider one bit of digital data. For example, I'm going to try and represent this thermometer with just one bit of digital data. I'm going to draw the midpoint at about 50 degrees centigrade. And if I have a, a digital one, I can say I'm in this region of the thermometer. If I have a digital zero, I'm in this region. But this is not a very accurate thermometer. It just tells, am I in the cold zone? If it's a zero, I'm in a hot zone. If it's a one. So one bit isn't going to make a very good digital thermometer. So I want to add another bit. So I can set this scale more accurately. In this case, rather than just two zones, with two bits I can have four zones of temperature. For example, this zone I can represent by a zero and a zero. 
this could be a 1 and a 0, a 0 and a 1, and all 1s up here. So I've improved the accuracy of my thermometer, but it's still not very good. So I could add another bit of data. And every time I do that, I double the resolution of my thermometer. For example, this could be three zeros. This could be one, zero, zero, and so on, etc. So with three bits of data, I can have eight different states. But let's presume I want to I really want a, a better thermometer. So I'm going to have eight bits of data. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I can get a, a very fine resolution. In fact, with eight bits of data, it's, I can get two times the eighth, two raised to the eighth power which is 256 resolutions. With three bits of data, it's two to the cube, which is eight different states. And with two bits, it's two raised to the second power, which is four states. And with one bit, it's two raised to the first power, which is this two states of data. So the more digital bits of data, the, the more accurate digital thermometer I can make. 